Hi, my name is Peter Laud and today I'm going to present you the work that we have performed here with my colleagues Alicia and Martin about the framework of metrics for differential privacy stemming from local sensitivity. So, a general data release problem is that we have a database, we run, we run some queries on it, we get some output, the output is made visible to somebody this somebody could be an attacker, so he might try to deduce something about the content of the database from the output that it sees. Uh, so in, in order for the output to be useful, this cannot be completely prevented, but we could, we could reduce the effect by adding some noise to the output, so that when the attacker sees the noise output, he can deduce less about the database. The amount of the noise, it can be adjusted uh, and we should find a good distribution to pick the noise from and, and a good magnitude for this noise. Indeed, so if the two databases are very different, then it might be impossible to hide from the adversary whether we use the first database or the second database, or if we manage to hide it, then just the result might be useless. But then there may be chances to hide small changes. And when we're talking about changes and the sizes of those, well, we, we need to have some measure of changes and typically this uh, size of changes can be expressed through a metric. So we have a set X, we have an information release mechanism F, which could be a SQL workflow, and it gives you a value from, from a set Y, and uh, X is a metric space, so there is a metric defined on it, so, and if X is a set of databases, then a typical distance on databases is the number of rows in all tables that we add or remove or change. Adding or removing one row means distance one. As we discussed about noise, so, so F really has to add noise, so F does, not o F does not always return the same result when applied to the same database. So F, the, F is really a probabilistic uh, function so we, we let this D of Y denote the set of all probability distributions over the set Y, and F transforms a database into a probability distribution over the set Y. And then we have this definition of differential privacy, so we say that F is epsilon differentially private, if uh, for two different databases X and X prime, the probability of getting a certain result uh, does not change too much, so the change is bounded above by the distance between x and x prime, and the bound is multiplicative. So this is the standard definition of differential privacy. And going forward with the example of SQL workflows, let's have this example here that uh, there are a number of ships on the sea, and there are also a number of islands in the sea, and for some reason we need one ship to reach some island as quickly as possible and if we have recorded the data about the ships in the table and data about islands in a different table we could ask how fast a ship can arrive at an island and this could be an SQL query and when discussing what we may want to hide here I mean we have islands and probably islands have names, the islands have locations both of them can be considered public. The ships I mean, the names could also be considered as public because, I mean, they are just, uh, they just identifiers of the ships. On the other hand, we consider the locations of the ships to be private. I mean, the ships can move around on the sea, so the locations are definitely private. Okay, maximum speed of the ship does not change so often than the location of the ship. So really, depending on the application, it could be either private or public. So here, the picture is really an instance of the database and well when we would change one row in this in this database one row in the table of ships and then this uh, and then this database could be could look something like this so the one ship has changed location i mean still we can tell that probably the minimum time of a ship reaching an island did not change because of that on the other hand i mean this is also change in a single row and this most probably changed the outcome of a query so we really see that not all changes in a single row are the same. So a row can change a little, it can change a lot. It really makes sense to treat such changes differently because otherwise uh, the privacy mechanism that, that we choose might not be the most appropriate one. Either we choose a mechanism which will be appropriate to hide the small change and then this mechanism is too powerful and most probably 
too noisy for the large change or vice versa if it's adequate for the large change then it may be not powerful enough for hiding the small changes indeed this distance on databases uh, can be defined uh, in various ways and if we have several different private uh, columns in a table then there are actually trade-offs to be made for example if uh, both the location and the speed are private then then how do we weigh a change in the location versus a change in speed and indeed so this uh, distance is something that the data owner or privacy policy officer should determine and so the dis distance is indeed a part of the privacy policy itself let us now move forward to determining how large the noise should be. We know there are a number of ways to, to compute an appropriate magnitude of noise for differential privacy. And they all have to do with the sensitivity of the computation, or in this case the sensitivity of the SQL workflow. We could use the global sensitivity of the workflow and deduce the noise magnitude from it in order to get the differential privacy with a particular value of epsilon. Or there is also local sensitivity, which also takes into to account the current contents of the database so that for databases where a small change may mean a large change in the result we would add more noise and when the database content is such that a small change cannot uh, change the result of the workflow much then less noise would be sufficient to achieve differential privacy the global sensitivity of a function is defined like this so indeed we are, again we have a set x which is a metric space so there is a metric on it uh, and we have a function into another set which is again a metric space and in the simpler setting the set y is just the set of real numbers and the distance between real numbers is just a difference and we define that the function f uh, is c sensitive for the real number of c if the change in the function values cannot be more than c times the change in in the values of arguments and this applies for any two points in the domain of f so to the word this uh, we say we say that the global sensitivity of f uh, is a supremum of the following formula where we divide the change in function values with a change in arguments and we know that there is this Laplace mechanism for making a finitely sensitive function differentially private. And this works by post-composing uh, the function with a noise addition. So we here have this uh, noise addition function which samples a value from the Laplace distribution with parameter sigma and adds it to the given value. And uh, we know this mechanism of making f differentially private, so we post-compose it with a noise where this argument sigma is proportional to the global sensitivity of f and inversely proportional to epsilon. Of course, the global sensitivity is a one-size-fits-all mechanism and this is its shortcoming. I mean, the function f might change rapidly in some part of its domain, like here. And here, the addition of large amounts of noise would be justified, but in some other region, it might change much more slowly so that less noise would be sufficient. To remedy this, local sensitivity of the function f was proposed and here the local sensitivity is now argument uh, of an element of the set x indeed so for each point x there is a different value for the local sensitivity and we could use local sensitivity to scale the amount of noise that we add but now we also know that uh, the amount of noise itself may leak something about f so if the local sensitivity itself would change sufficiently slowly then we would use it to scale the noise but in general we could look at upper bounds of local sensitivity and such such upper bounds that have a global sensitivity at most beta well beta is another numeric parameter and again there are ways uh, to use local sensitivity to make uh, functions differentially private and again we do it by post composing uh, the function with noise but now the noise has to be selected from a different uh, distribution it is the generalized Cauchy distribution and again there is a theorem which tell us, tells us uh, how much noise should be selected and now this parameter of the noise we see it also depends on the value value of x. When we look at the expression of local sensitivity and the inequality that it satisfies, we see it is actually rather similar to the derivative of a function, in particular when the domain of f basically just has a single dimension so that the domain x is again the set of real numbers then the derivative of f with respect to the variable x is defined like this and when we consider the fraction between the distances of function values and the distances of arguments then the value of this fraction is 
actually achieved by this function at a certain point z which is between x and x prime and if we consider not just the derivative of f but some beta smooth upper bounds of this derivative then this derivative value at z is actually close to the derivative value at x prime where the closeness actually depends on the value of beta. There is a reason why we want the sensitivity of a queries to be defined in terms of derivatives because when we then start computing these sensitivities or the upper bounds then we could use all the methods of calculus so there is a rich toolbox for them literally developed over the century. If we come back to our example we have ship's parameters and we want to define derivatives for these SQL workflows over this table of ships and table of islands so we quite naturally end up with Banner spaces. So the Banner space is a vector space which is equipped with norms and which is complete. And we think of our set of possible databases as a Banner space. Recall that in our example, the number of rows in each table has actually been fixed so that uh, this Banner space that we have does have a well-defined dimension. And as a query, we consider an SQL workflow that computes a number. So the query really is a mapping from this Banner space to the set of real numbers. As we said, the local sensitivity is rather similar to derivative or actually to the size of the derivative. So we define a version of local sensitivity, which we call derivative sensitivity. And uh, it's actually defined in a very simple way the derivative sensitivity of the query f at a certain point db where db is an element of this banner space b well it is the operator norm of the fresh air derivative of f at this point db now in this expression there are several words which need some further explanation let us first start with the derivative so normally we define derivatives for functions that take real numbers and also return real numbers and the derivative of this function at some point x is again a real number and this real number has the following property let us say that we just change the argument of g a little so we add, we add some small delta to x in this case this g at the point x plus delta is more or less g at the point of x plus a change which is proportional to delta where the coefficient is equal to the derivative of g at x and the error here is negligible in the size of delta similarly the derivative of a mapping from a bonus space to real numbers uh, at a certain point db is well perhaps not so similarly it is a linear operator from the same bonus space to again to, to real numbers Still, it is rather similar if we reword the usual derivative of a little bit. So instead of considering this g prime of x as a real number, we would think of this derivative again as a linear mapping from real numbers to real numbers. And well, the only linear mappings from real numbers to real numbers are those that multiply its argument with a constant. So this constant would be this g prime of x. And then this approximate equality can be rephrased as follows that this changes this d of g at the point x at the change delta and indeed the fresh air derivative is similarly defined uh, so now this linear operator must work like this but again when we change this uh, argument a little but now delta is also a multi-dimensional change delta is again an element of the banner space so that when we apply the fresh air derivative to delta well we almost get f at point db plus delta where, where again either is negligible in the size of delta the other part operator norm just states how much it could uh, increase the length of its argument and as we show in the paper the derivative sensitivity can indeed be used to achieve differential privacy again by post composing uh, with the addition of noise and again this noise can be sampled from the generalized Cauchy distribution instead of generalized Cauchy distribution we could also consider a Laplace distribution but then we are not going to get epsilon differential privacy but we are only going to get epsilon delta differential privacy how do we compute the derivative sensitivity of a mapping which might be an SQL workflow now this depends a lot on the norm that we use on the banner space in the easiest case let's say we have an n-dimensional di space and we have an LP norm on it and in this case the derivative sensitivity of f at the point x 
in this space is just given by the partial derivatives of, uh, of f at this point where these values of partial derivatives are again combined uh, by a different norm. We also have a combinator property. So let's say we have a Banner space, which is really a Cartesian product of two Banner spaces. And the norm on this Banner space is also a combination of the norms on, on this component spaces with an LP norm. And in this case, we can again compute the derivative sensitivity of F as a combination of the derivative sensitivity of F restricted to the first component and the derivative sensitivity of F restricted to the second component. In general, we are interested in Banner spaces where the norms are composed from the norms of smaller things. So in general, we have attributes and the norm of the attributes is just the value of this attribute. The norm of those we construct as a, an LP combination of the norms of attributes. Or we could also define a norm for a part of a row and a different norm for a different part of a row and then we could compose them again using some LP construction. And the norm for the whole tables, it somehow comes from the norm of those. And again, it could be defined using different LP norms. Uh, so the typical definition where change in one row means a unit change in the norm, this would correspond to L1 norm for the table. And finally, again, for, for the database, it's the same thing. We get the norms of the tables and we somehow combine them. It could, again, be L1 norm or it could be some other norm. And all these different ways of defining a norm can be meaningful. These different norms correspond to different privacy policies. For each query, there is some norm with respect to which one the sensitivity of this query is natural to compute. In general, let's say, well, we have some query, for example, compute the exponent of x. In this case, the natural norm here would be just the magnitude of x, so that uh, the natural derivative sensitivity would be the derivative of uh, e to the power of x. So this natural norm for the query is determined by the query, which is determined by the analyst. But the privacy policy for the database, it's determined uh, by the data owner or by some policy officer. He might have specified a different norm. So how do we reconcile this? We are able to compute the sensitivity of the query with respect to one norm, but we are really interested in its sensitivity with respect to a different norm. Consider still the same query here, computing the exponent of x, and then consider also possible database norms, some examples of which are given in the left column of the table. What we are now going to do is, well, we are going to upper bound one norm with a different norm, so the one norm that we are going to upper bound is this database norm, and the different norm is now related to this natural norm of this query we can actually use this uh, derivative with respect to query norm to upper bound the derivative with respect to the database norm and we can use the derivative with respect to the query norm to compute the magnitude of the noise. Our approach is applicable to SQL workflows and SQL queries uh, that have database joins and indeed also to joins uh, that use the same table multiple times. In this case, uh, we can think of uh, just having multiple copies of the table. So we compute the sensitivity for each table separately and uh, we can combine all copies of the row using the infinity norm. Again, this is explained in more detail in the paper. Finally, let us consider the following. Uh, we have stated that this database norm, which gives us the distance, is a part of our privacy policy. On the other hand, of course, the epsilon of the differential privacy is also a part of the privacy policy. And we see that there is an obvious degree of freedom. Namely, if we scale the distance by some factor, let's say some alpha, and at the same time we also scale epsilon by the inverse of alpha, then we actually haven't done anything. If we have fixed the distance, or let's say if we are using some very canonical distance. But if the distance is chosen as part of the privacy policy, then really you choose the distance and epsilon both at the same time. To conclude, we have shown that there is a rich set of defining uh, distances over sets of databases, uh, and they all can be meaningful when defining privacy policies. We have also shown that the local sensitivity and the derivative are really very similar and the mathematical tools 
of computing the derivatives can be used uh, in determining the amount of noise one has to add in order to get differential privacy at a certain level.